Hello and uh, welcome to the third rail. If you're familiar with the channel, you've probably already seen a video or two featuring a few of my trains running on my temporary layout. The uh, layout is quite busy with a capacity for up to eight trains. And um, here is a track plan. It's uh, basically two parallel dog bones to avoid the ubiquitous oval and a shuttle line in the centre. Attached to this construct is a fiddle yard section with the turntable, transfer table and a few sidings for shunting and rolling stock preparation. The uh, two main loops have similar block systems. The shuttle line is operated with a Merklin controller 6600 which gives delayed braking acceleration and shuttle functions. I find the layout quite nice, but there are a few things I'd like to change or do differently next time. So what's wrong with it? Well, the layout can definitely handle a lot of traffic, but it is fundamentally quite simple. We have basically two loops uh, divided into a lot of short blocks. There are over 40 solenoid accessories to make everything work. As a result, the layout is a bit hectic, even a bit stressful to watch at times. The tight space available forced me to make some compromises on safety. And the uh, layout cannot handle some of the items in the collection. Finally, it's over a year old now, and my layouts don't last that long usually. Time for a change is definitely overdue. Usually I start compiling a wish list based on the experience of the current layout I am playing with. Here's what I have come up with this time. I'd like the layout to have a more quieter feel, but with a smoother flow of traffic. It will still run some form of automation, but would be much less stressful to watch this way. My trains are currently too short for my liking. This is due to the shape of my lines and the number of blocks I've implemented. So I'd like to run trains this time with uh, five or six passenger coaches. Ideally, I'd like also to extend the travel time between stops, maybe even have some form of a long parade route somewhere. I love bridges, so an elevated section will feature uh, somewhere on the layout, and if possible I'd like to have catenary installed again. Now, how can I have longer trains and an increased travel time? Ideally I'd need more track and a larger baseboard, but my space remains limited and I need to be able to move easily around the layout. It's a bit cramped at the moment. A way to lengthen the journeys would be to join my ovals together, but this is really not optimal in an automated scenario. Another way to achieve this within the limitation I have is to base the layout on a figure of eight. This gives me the ability to reverse trains with all trains following each other on a single line. The reversing loops would give a good illusion of trains travelling in opposite directions. So I think I'm going to give this a try. So before I start designing anything, uh, there are a few physical constraints, such as train length for example, that I need to think about. I mentioned earlier I wish to run longer trains with up to five or six carriages in the case of passenger trains. Now the rolling stock I collect has a length of between 24 and 27 centimeters. I'd like to run consists of up to six coaches, so I need six times 27 centimeters space in each block for those. Then I'll also need to add 36 centimeters for the stopping sections in order for the steam locomotives to stop. Uh, in the right place. So if I add all this up, this gives me a minimum block length of 162 plus 36 centimeters, that's 198 centimeters minimum length for each 
station or block area. This type of distance will also allow me to run uh, freight trains with up to 10 wagons. Uh, that should be quite nice to look at. So then we have to think about the uh, figure of 8. This means that we'll have to deal with crossing of lines, uh, probably one on top of each other. That means that I need to factor in the minimum height requirement. I also plan to install catenary. And in this case, the minimum height requirement to allow catenary installation is 10.4 centimeters in the Merklin system. So getting to that height will require long inclines. So I need to think about ways to do this in the space I have to play with. And this space is 540 centimeters by 120 centimeters to allow movement around the layout. So let's move to the uh, track planning software. Uh, I'm using Rail Modeler Pro on uh, Mac OS. Uh, that's the only package I know which is uh, available through the App Store. Uh, it's quite a nice package by the way. But anyway, uh, we'll start by uh, laying a baseboard so that we have some uh, dimensions to work with. So in my case the footprint of the layout will be 5 meter 40 by 1 meter 20. That should give me a bit more uh, moving space. We discussed stations and station length, so we'll start by laying those, uh, which I've done here. Uh, I've sized them according to my requirement for six cars, so uh, the idea for the layout is that train will travel from the blue station uh, to the yellow station and that some form of change of direction will occur so that this is made possible on the layout. Uh, the measurements are 2 meter and 70 for the longer part of the station and 2 meter 40 on the narrower part or shorter part. Uh, so we have the braking sections which will be 36 centimeters and then from there we have about 1 meter 80 left for uh, rolling stock which is enough for six cars. Uh, there will be a block system again so trains entering any of the station will automatically release a train that's uh, waiting there. Uh, let's have a look at the uh, uh, exit of the uh, layout. So we've just followed the train from the blue station to the yellow station and, and go through the uh, uh, various parts of the layout. So the train will exit the blue station towards the right and enter a little section of track uh, which will lead the trains to uh, first incline, uh, which is curved and will start a uh, reversing process. The incline is set at 3.3% for the moment. Oh, I'm using the old-fashioned uh, bridge system that was sold up until the beginning of the uh, 70s. At that point it was replaced by plastic bridges which offered more flexibility as far as a uh, gradient and uh, curve is concerned because you could have first radius and second, second radius curve. With my system I'm limited to a first radius curve and I'm also limited on my gradient because the system goes up in steps of a minimum of six uh, millimeters. 
so that's 3% over a 180 centimeter piece of track. Uh, if you double that, you're straight at 6.6%, .6%, which is a bit steep. So I decided to keep the gradient to the minimum offered by the bridge system. Uh, that incline brings the trains up to a height of 107 millimeters, which is what's required in order to be able to have catenary uh, running under an elevated section. Once the train have managed the incline, they will enter a bridge section at uh, this height of 107 millimeters, and they will travel along this uh, this bridge section, which uh, to reach a uh, second incline, which will then complete the reversing process and bring the train back down to. Uh, baseboard level. Once the train has gone down the incline, they will enter a section of main line that will lead them to the yellow station. Again, uh, it's basically the same as the blue station. There's also a little block section here. So trains entering the yellow station will release another train waiting there. Train will exit the uh, yellow station and enter a uh, curve section which would start uh, reversing them. Uh, they will uh, go back to the blue station using that track. So they'll travel along the first piece of track then uh, go back to the inner station, the blue station, after again reversing. And the cycle will start again. Uh, now, not all trains might be able to manage the incline. Uh, I don't know yet, but should it be the case, or would I wish to uh, uh, make some train bypass the bridge. I've added an element, uh, a section of track that will bring the trains back from uh, the trains existing the yellow station back uh, to uh, the main line on the opposite side of the layout, and that would then lead them back to the yellow station, all using more or less radius to curves, which uh, would probably be uh, there, despite what Martin says, there are some trains, there are a few trains, which uh, I'm thinking about ICEs, for example, who don't manage the uh, narrower curve radius or the lower curve radiuses that well. Uh, again, it depends on the train. There could be something wrong with them as well. Uh, I don't know. Anyway. But that's possible as well. Uh, that would be just a basically an oval. So I've added an element of play with a small industry area, which will be electrically isolated with a crane and a little uh, siding for a shelter waiting there. I uh, might add a few uncouplers or, or just leave a uh, shunter with some uh, uh, telex couplings to, uh, to do that, that bit. And I've also added a uh, roundhouse uh, with an entrance and exit uh, track and a little siding for a rescue train of some sort. Some sort. It's more decorative, but uh, the crane's there to simulate the coal loading. But uh, yeah, so that's how it looks like in principle. So this was the plan as it stands today. Uh, but before going any further, there's still a bit more work that I need to do to it. I need to add a block system and decide how many trains I will run as a whole on the layout. Then I need to uh, label my accessories on the plan to indicate where I should connect them. After that, I'll be able to plan the power distribution 
and size the total power requirement for the layout and decide on a number of transformer to use and how to distribute their power. And before I can do all this, there is one more step uh, I need to go through. First of all, I need to start dismantling the current layout. And I'll use the opportunity to test the inclines. As we have seen in the current plan, this will be quite long and will have a fixed slope at 3.3%. At this point in time, I am unsure trains would manage this configuration, so I used the dismantling phase to test similar inclines with uh, the bridges I currently have out. I reconfigure them. So I will choose my worst and heaviest passenger train uh, with all carriages equipped with uh, interior lighting uh, so that I have a combination of heavy weight and friction that I can test and I'll also take a very heavy goods train and put it through its spaces on this configuration. Uh, based on the results uh, I might need to adjust or change my plans completely. Who knows? In any case it looks like I have my work cut out for the foreseeable future. So I shall start the uh, dismantling process and the testing. I will film some of it and we will see the results in a future video on uh, the topic of the new layout. For now I'd like to thank you very much for watching. It's very much appreciated. I'd also like to thank the recent new subscribers to the channel. Uh, it's always nice to see that people are interested in what I produce and so much so that they subscribe to uh, be notified of uh, upcoming uploads. This is uh, very rewarding and keeps me going. Thank you very much again and bye for now.